front here is your hitch and your A-frame. So with your hitch, um, you'll back your vehicle up, use your jockey wheel um, to lower it onto your tow wheel. This will lock down at sort of an angle so you know that the tow wheel is on correctly. And then you can push this lever all the way down. Um, it doesn't work without a tow ball in there, so we'll show you that when you collect the van. When you go to take this off your vehicle, um, so you lift it up to here and then you lift it up further so it's almost vertical while you wind it off your vehicle. If you don't hold this handle up that wee bit higher, um, the caravan will just lift your vehicle up by the tow ball. You've got a standard 7 pin trailer plug. Uh, there is an additional sort of auxiliary cord here. Um, that's for if you want to charge the battery from your vehicle while you tow or run your fridge off 12 volt. You get those two wired together by an auto electrician um, and they pop a 12 pin trailer plug on that. You've also got your breakaway cable. So with these you can pop that onto the dead shifter on the vehicle. Or you can clip it back onto itself so it sits around your tow ball like that. And that's designed so that if this hitch ever failed, this will pull and snap off and pop your handbrake on. It just stops the van rolling past you down the motorway. So with your handbrake, um, it's much like a car. Just push down for off and pull up for on. Um, might be a wee bit hard to see, but on your jockey wheel, there's just these wee grooves here. So those are designed for these arms to go up into. That's so that your jockey wheel is raised to its highest point um, and it also stops it spinning around as well. So once the van's on your vehicle, you've wound your jockey wheel right up. You can then undo this handle and pull the whole jockey wheel mechanism right up into your A-frame. So that gets it nice and out of the way and you can then just tighten that back up to keep it there. Just behind your A-frame, this is your front locker. So there is space in here for two 9 kilo gas bottles. Uh, they just have sort of like a standard spin-on barbecue connection. Um, this is for the gas line, so that's currently open, but there is the option to shut it off if you ever want to do that. This is your leg winder. So there's four stabilizers on each corner of the van. Um, and you just use this to wind it up and down. And then you've also got your mains power cord for when you go to plug in at a campground. Now you will notice um, in the corner of this front locker there are some grates. So these lockers are open to the elements. Um, so don't store anything in here that you don't want getting damp or dusty. Um, and also these front lockers do have a payload of around 20 to 23 kilos. So once you've got your gas bottles in there, just store light bits and pieces. Don't overload the front because it will affect the towing of your van. So right up on the front corner of your van, um, this here is the vent for your water heater when you're running it on gas. So when you, before you turn the water heater on gas, make sure you come out and take this travel cover off. When you're not using the water heater on gas, do make sure that you pop this cover back on. Um, just because, especially when you're towing the van, you can get dust and dirt and all sorts of bits and pieces in there. Um, and also spiders like to crawl in there because it's nice and warm, so they make webs, which really affects the ignition of your hot water heater. So just push it on at the bottom and you'll just see here it dips in at the top. So just keep that on when you're not using it. Just behind that, this is the water housing unit. So up in here is a water pump that you can change sort of periodically. Um, there is a wee connection for if you do want to connect a shower to the outside of your van. But the main connection, so you get your water pump here, just hold that wee lever back and that pushes into there. It will need a wee bit of a wriggle just because it's plastic on plastic. Um, you then get your fresh water barrel, so you fill that up, take this lid off, drop, this is the, the pump here, drop your pump right into the bottom, um, and you've got a wee sort of dust cap you can pop there. So drop that in right to the bottom, 
and then once you've got that hooked up you can go inside and turn your water pump on when you go to remove this pump just make sure again that you do hold that lever back um, otherwise it'll be a bit hard to get off right just up on the same side as your housing unit but behind your wheel this is the outlet for your grey water so when you go to connect this just take that cap off got your wee grey water hose here so that pops on these cam locks can be a bit stiff when they're new and then you've got the same connection on your grey water caddy here So there is a valve underneath here so once you've got your grey water hose hooked up just make sure that is in the open position um, make sure this valve is open as well there is a wee gauge up the top here um, so you can just monitor when you need to empty this and then at the other end this is your breather so that just pops into there uh, make sure that's open that just lets all the air escape as your grey water caddy fills when you go to empty the grey water caddy, take this pipe out and just close that breather off. Close this valve and unhook it. Um, turn this valve off if you do have just some excess grey water in the system. And then you can unhook that. Wheel your caddy away to your dump station. There is a bungee cord here so there is eyelets on the side of the caddy um, so if you do want to you can strap your toilet cassette on there and empty it at the same time or you can just use it to strap it to the van so it doesn't roll around in the wind and you've got a wee cap and spout here and that's designed to just go on the end so when you're emptying the caddy it just gives you a nice direct pour so up on the other end of your van this is your wee security handle um, so what you want to do when you want to move it is just pull this down, make sure you've got it unlocked at the side, pull this lever down and then just spin it round. So you can lock it in that position so you can use it to get in the van, or you can lock it this way and lock it up so it's just a bit more security for your door. So that's just how that one works there. Underneath that, this is the fresh water filler for your toilet. So it's depending on the model they generally take sort of 8 to 10 litres um, but it is sort of a visual reference so just fill it up with fresh water until you get some sitting in this trough here. Um, there is a pink toilet chemical that can go in with this fresh water. Um, it just helps with smell and it also helps lubricate the seals inside your pump as well. Underneath that this here is your actual toilet cassette. So when you go to remove it, just make sure you lift this wee yellow lever here and pull that one out. Now these three parts here are all operated with inside the van, so you don't need to worry about those. Um, when you go to empty this, turn the spout out. If you're finding this cap quite hard to get off, this is a wee air release button that you can press just to take off some of that pressure. Under your cap, empty your toilet cassette um, and then you will notice on this cap there are some wee measurements. So there is a blue toilet chemical which goes in the cassette. Um, that just helps break down everything and again helps with smell. So you can use that, pop some chemical in there, bring it back to the van and you just slide it back in. And just make sure that that yellow tab clips in behind there. Um, there's also just this wee bung up here. This is for when you are not using the van, specifically over winter. You can just pull that out um, and that drains all the fresh water um, out of here. So that just stops your pump being submerged for long periods of time because it can cause them to seize up and not work. Um, and it also prevents any frost damage as well. So just in this locker here, this is your 12 volt battery. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that, it sort of does its own thing. Um, but this is where it is if you do ever need to change it. Um, just in the compartment next to it, this is your main power connection. So there is a groove on your cord which matches the one on the van, so it can only go on the one way. 
Um, so just hold that cap back, push that on, release the cap. There's a wee catch there that it hooks onto just to keep the cord in place. Um, and then you do have just here a wee groove in the locker and the lid. So you can pop the cord there. And then that way you can lock this locker. Um, so it just stops the weather from getting in there, but it also stops people being able to get to your battery and your mains power. So just next to your battery locker here, this is an awning warmer. So when you've got your heater on and if you've got your 12 volt fan running, this will pump some of that warm air out into your awning. Um, so that's just a wee option there. So this wee um, compartment right at the front, this is for a gas connection for if you want to run a barbecue off the gas bottles in the van. Um, so you do, you can get a wee adapter that plugs into there um, and then you can run the barbecue from there. You will need probably a gas fitter to make you up a line here um, just because you can't have a regulator on the line from the van to the barbecue. And that's because the gas bottles in the caravan are already regulated so if you double regulate that gas it won't work so just inside the van just above sort of like your dresser area um, this switch here is the mains power switch for your 12 volt so you can come in and flick that on any lights that have been left on will come on um, next to that is for your fresh water pump so once you've got that pump connected and your fresh water barrel full you can come in turn that switch on the pump will run um, you may need to open the taps and just let some air out of the line um, but then that pump will pressurize um, and only kick in and out when you need it there is a wee battery button here it's just a wee test function so it's just sort of a quick view of um, the voltage level of your battery so for your satellite setup, um, you'll get your TV all connected um, and you'll most likely have a wee no signal box bouncing around. So to set up your satellite, just in this cupboard up here, this is the elevation meter for your satellite. So you just want to come in and turn that on, just make sure it says antenna closed there. You'll then come over to your satellite, which is just up near the door. Um, so what you'll do first is just clip this handle down and then start to wind your satellite up. Um, in the Otago region we have a elevation of 36. So as I wind, um, your wee elevation meter, we'll just zoom in a wee bit, will start to flash um, and then it'll kick into some numbers. So you just want to wind it up till you get pretty close. There we are. So once you've done that, you can then just clip that handle back up in the meantime. Um, there's a wee tab here, so you unlock your satellite. Um, you can then rotate it, so you've got it to your angle, and now what we're doing is rotating the satellite to find the north point. Um, this wee outer dial does rotate, um, so as you can see, I've just already had a wee look at where north is and we've just marked it here so if we go to roughly around sort of this patch you may find that you've got to adjust it um, just a wee bit and then that signal will kick in just there um, and yeah this outer ring does move so you can, um, if you're going to put the satellite down because you're going to bed or if it gets really windy, you can just mark that north point so you know where to bring it back to next time. So once you've got it in the right position, click that handle away and then lock the dish back into position just so it won't spin around on you when you're watching TV. And then when you go to put it down, just unlock that, spin this arrow back to home so you spin it right round just to match this arrow here lock it back into place um, and then you can then wind it down 
um, you'll see it wind down on your elevation meter um, and if you just wind it until it says antenna closed and you will feel it sort of stop you can then click that up into place come over to your elevation meter um, and just press it three times to turn that off just up again um, on that sort of dresser area just across from your uh, mains power switch up the top here is the controls for your water heater so if you want to run your water heater on power just come in flick the switch on and then that'll just do its thing this one next to it is if you want to run your water heater on gas so come in turn that to gas you'll get the wee green light um, and then you've got a wee thermostat in the middle from 30 right round to 70. You will hear a click under the front seat. That's just the water heater trying to ignite. If you get this red light, what you need to do is turn this off. Go outside and check your gas bottles are connected. Check that they have got gas in them. And also check to make sure you've removed that travel cover from the outside. Once you've checked those three things, you can then come in, turn that back on, and that should kick away into life. Below that, this is to run your room heater on mains power. So when you're going to run it on mains power, you need to make sure that this switch is in the on position. This is the main isolator for your room heater. You've then got the controls on this side, so you can run it at 2000 watts, a thousand watts right at the bottom or 500 near the middle the wee circle is to turn it off you've then got a thermostat in the middle from one right round to nine you will get a green light on this one as well but if the isolator switch is turned off you won't get the green light so do make sure that's on but when you go to use it this here is your actual room heater unit so up on the left this is the controls for your 12 volt fan. Um, so that'll run whether you're running the heater on gas or 240 volt. Um, to the right here, this is automatic. So there are some temperature sensors in this heater um, that will kick in and out as it needs to. Um, and then over to the far left is continuous. Um, and you've then got your fan speed up the top here. Um, and then if you do want to turn it off, you can just put it to the wee circle in the middle. Um, so that fan will pump the heat around the van, just out to these vents up the front, um, and also out through that awning warmer as well. On the right hand side, this is to run your heater on gas. So you'll turn this, generally sort of turn it up quite high to start with. You'll hear it ticking. So that's the heater trying to ignite. You then push this purge button in. Um, and there is a wee viewing window just down here. So about that far down and about 25 mil in, there will be a little glass viewing window that matches the shape of this. Um, so when you've got that purge button pushed down and it's trying to ignite, you'll get a sort of a blue flame. Once it's held that blue flame for a few seconds, let go of that purge button and it should kick in to a nice bright yellow flame. Once it's ignited, you can then adjust your temperature from one right round to 10. And then to turn it off on gas is to just click it just past the zero. Um, you'll feel it sort of click um, and it'll be off on gas. Just next to your room heater is your fridge. So on the right, you've just got a wee thermostat, depending on how cold you want the fridge and the freezer to be. Um, on the left, this is your sort of mode selector. So you've got gas there. So you'll get an orange light and you'll hear it rapidly ticking. So that's the fridge trying to ignite on gas. Um, once it's ignited, that light will go green. Um, you've got mains power. In the middle there so as long as you've got that mains power cord connected um, the fridge will just start to cool down on that you've then got a battery option at the bottom you'll notice there's no light there um, because it's not currently wired up so you'll need to take your trailer plug and that auxiliary cord at the front of the van um, and get those wired together 
to be a 12 pin trailer plug you'll need an auto electrician to do that for you as they also have to change the trailer plug on your vehicle to a 12 pin plug um, and what it'll do is as long as you've cooled the fridge down on either power or gas the night before um, or at least for a few hours got the fridge nice and cold you can hook up your van turn it to battery um, and that'll keep the fridge at the temperature that it's currently at so it'll keep it cold um, but it will not chill it down straight from warm so you'll have to have the fridge already chilled turn that on and that'll just maintain that main temperature while you tow the van and then once you're done using the van um, you just pop that switch right up to the top to turn your fridge off so this here is your hob your grill and your oven so if you just lift this glass right up to the back so you've got three gas elements up the top here the controls for those are on the left hand side so when you're going to ignite one of these you just push that button in turn it to the highest flame um, and while holding that button in you need to hit this igniter on the front of the oven Give it a few seconds, it'll kick into life, and then you can just adjust your flame setting from there, and then just turn it back to the top for off. So that's the same for all three of these ones. Um, when you're finished using this, do make sure all these wires um, are cool to the touch before you put this glass lid back down, because there has been times in the past where people have put the glass down when these are still quite hot, and it has shattered that glass. Underneath here with your grill, um, very similar operation. So you've got a wee grill tray and there is a wee handle in there that clips onto the side. Um, your grill ignites on either side of this barrel here. So this one on the left is for your grill. So push it in, turn and hold it at the highest flame setting, hit that igniter, that'll ignite, adjust from there and then back to the zero for off and again with your oven so it ignites along that silver rail at the back exactly the same push it in turn and hold hit your igniter and then adjust your temperature from there um, and your oven does also have this we we lighten it as well so just under the front seat on your sort of oven side of the van um, this gray unit here is your water heater now, as long as you're using those controls up by the dresser, this sort of does its own thing. You don't have to worry about it. The only thing to know is this wee yellow switch here is designed for when you're going to be storing the van. Again, especially over winter. Just come in, flick that switch up, and that'll drain all the water out of your water heater. Um, also a good idea to open up all your taps as well and just get any remaining water out of the system. So that stops anything from freezing and bursting in this water heater. Um, only thing to remember is when you come back to use the van is to make sure that you do flip this switch down. Nothing drastic will happen if you don't. Um, you'll just find that all the fresh water you get from your barrel will be pumped straight out the floor of your van. Just underneath the seat but on the opposite side to your water heater um, under here, this is just your battery charger in bits and pieces. Again, you don't have to worry about that, it does its own thing. Um, but this is also where your 12 volt fuses are. So if you do have any issues with anything on 12 volt, just come and check these fuses first. Inside the wardrobe in your bathroom, this is where your main RCD and your MCBs are. So if you are having an issue with 240, just come and check that these are all flipped up. Um, and the MCBs can also be used if you do want to switch off particular parts of the van. Um, so this one on the end is responsible for your fridge, your water heater, the lights and your battery charger. And then the one in the middle is for your sockets, um, the wet locker and also um, for your room heater. Um, so that's just where those are if you ever need to get to them. So this is the inside of your toilet. So with your toilet bowl that does rotate. If you do want to push it out of the way just so you've got some more room in the bathroom or adjust it to fit your legs in. Open that up there. 
Um, so this wee blue button up the top is your flush button. So there's no water in there at the moment, but that just comes out of there and flushes in. Um, and then you've got this grey handle. So if you pull that to the right, that'll open up into your toilet cassette. So use the toilet, flush everything away, and then just close that back up. Um, do make sure before you go to remove the toilet cassette from the outside that this lever is pushed around to the left in the closed position. Um, the cassettes are only designed to be removed when the toilet is closed, so if you have it open you could risk damaging something. Um, but yeah, that is the inside of your toilet. With your extractor fan here, um, so this wee knob on the side just opens up that roof light and then closes it. Um, with So this is your fan speed here from 1 to 3. Um, when you've got the arrow facing towards the bathroom, that is pumping air into the van. So if you did want to circulate some air in the van, you can do that. And then when you've got it facing towards the front, um, it's extracting the air out of the van. So you can put it on that mode when you're cooking. And then just back to the middle is off.